For a subject today, I want to talk to you of the veil that was placed before the holies of holies in the temple. And before we get into this message, I will pray and ask the Lord to just bless this message. Heavenly Father, we come before you. And we pray, Lord, that you will allow your Holy Spirit to rest upon this message as it reaches out to people. Lord, you will anoint it with the power of your Holy Spirit. You will go before this message and open the hearts and minds of them that are listening so that they will come to the knowledge of the truth, Lord. For we know your time is drawing near when you're soon going to be coming back. Father, we, you are willing that none shall perish. So, precious God, you will give people the understanding. You will give people the knowledge of what you want for them. We thank you, O oh God, for them that are listening. We thank you in Jesus' precious name. Amen. I want to read to you out of Second Chronicles chapter 3, verse 8. It kind of describes the Holy of Holies which was a place, a room in the temple. It says, Within the temple at one end was the most sacred room, the Holy of Holies, 30 feet square. This too was overlaid with the finest gold. 26-ounce gold nails were used to construct it. So we know that King Solomon spent a lot of money to fix that Holy of Holies. Within the innermost room, the Holy of Holies, Solomon placed two sculptured statues of angels and placed, plated them with gold. They stood on the floor, facing the outer room with wings stretched wingtip to wingtip across the room from wall to wall. Across the entrance to this room, he placed a veil of blue and crimson, fine spun linen and decorated with angels. And you will ask me, what is the veil and what is the room all about? Well, in the Old Testament, when the children of Israel were commanded to bring a blood sacrifice once a year to a pace for their sins, the priest would slaughter a lamb which they had brought and kill it before God on the altar, just outside the Holy of Holies where the altar was. And then once a year he would bring that blood of that lamb sacrifice into the Holy of Holies and there he would offer it up to God. And nobody was allowed to go into that room except for the priest who was ordained. And he alone could enter in and only once a year. Anybody who entered into that most holy place behind the veil died instantly. But something happened at the crucifixion of Jesus Christ. When Jesus Christ was nailed to the cross and he hung there, and one, just before he died, the Lord Jesus cried out with a loud voice and said, It is finished. Then something happened. It says in Matthew 27, verse 51, it says, And behold, the veil of the temple was rent in two from top to bottom. What an interesting thing that took place because that veil had been hanging there for the last 4,000 years. Nobody had gone behind that except the priest. And now all of a sudden, when Jesus Christ died, the moment Jesus Christ died on the cross, that veil split in two. It was rent in two by unseen hands. And you will ask me, what does that indicate? Well, the Bible teaches from that moment on, the blood sacrificing and the priesthood was came to an end. From now on, there was going to be a different way of coming to, to the Lord God. You will ask me, what do you mean by that? Well, the Bible teaches that once the blood sacrifice and the priesthood were taken out of the way, then the, and the curtain had ripped down the middle, then all of a sudden, 
we the people can go in on to the Lord Jesus Christ, to God ourselves. We do not need an, any other mediator anymore. For in 1 Timothy chapter 2, verse 5 it says, For there is one God and one mediator between God and man, the main Jesus Christ. So instead of we getting somebody to intercede for us, to, uh, for our sins to God, we can come to the Lord Jesus Christ who is ever sitting at the right hand of the Father interceding for us. And this is the new covenant that God has made with men. From now on, since the crucifixion of Jesus Christ, we can come to God ourselves because Jesus Christ is now our mediator. We don't need an intercessor anymore. We don't need somebody in a human being that intercedes for us. We can come to God simply and openly by ourselves. You will ask if we don't need any priest anymore to come to God for us, what is a preacher and a priest for? Well, they are there for to, to teach you how to come to Christ. If somebody does not understand the Bible, then it's the duty of the pastor, the preacher, or the priest to teach the people who come to them how to come into the veil, direct them to the Lord Jesus Christ. They pray with them, they seek the face of God with them till the person himself finds enough faith to come to the Lord Jesus Christ and accept him by faith and turn to him by faith. The priesthood in the Old Testament has been done away with. We don't need a priest now to intercede for us anymore or to come between us and God. They are only now there to help us in the process of finding Christ. If you don't understand it in the scripture, then God has set up pastors and teachers and preachers for that job. They have nothing to do with your salvation. You do not come to them with your sins. You don't confess your sins to them. You come to the Lord Jesus Christ himself and confess your sins to him. You will ask, how about the religions that teach that you should come to a preacher or a priest to confess your sin? I will show you in Mark, Matthew chapter 23, verse 13, which describes those people who set themselves between you and God. It says, Woe unto you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites, for you shut up the kingdom of heaven against men, for you neither go in yourself, neither suffer you them that are entering to go in. So in reality, what they are doing, when they say you have to come to them with your sins, they are blocking you from coming to Jesus yourself. And they will try and detour you and try to make you believe their doctrines that they have set up for the commandments of men and so that you will not fully trust in the Lord Jesus Christ. And they will try to point the, to themselves in, and instead of pointing you to the Lord Jesus Christ. So be careful. A person or preacher or a teacher who does not point you to the Lord Jesus Christ, who does not show you the way of salvation, that it is only through the blood of Jesus Christ that you can uh, find forgiveness for your sins. You will find yourself in a deadly trap where you will eventually end up in the lake of fire because you have put your trust in a human being instead of putting your trust in the precious blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. And the Bible teaches that we have to be very careful for in the last days there shall be seducing spirits and doctrines of devil. It says in 
Second, in 1 Timothy chapter 4 it says, Now the Spirit speaketh express, expressly, that in the latter times some shall depart from the faith, giving heed to seducing spirits and doctrines of devils, speaking lies and hypocrisy, having their conscience seared with an hot iron. And those people will come to you and in a hypocrisy pretending they are sent from God and will try and tell you how to get to God by pointing to uh, to themselves instead of pointing you to the Lord Jesus Christ. And I want to warn anybody that the Lord God has left us a book. It is called the Holy Bible. You read that book. You, you put aside whatever books men have written. But turn to the Bible and study its pages. In there you will find the instructions of how to turn to the Lord Jesus Christ. The veil has been rent down the middle. Now you can go in there by yourself. The Lord Jesus said to Nicodemus very clearly, For God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son, that those who believe in Him shall not perish, but have everlasting life. There is no do's and don'ts about this. There is only turning to the Lord Jesus Christ for your salvation. And anybody who cannot understand that either does not want to or is totally mixed up in his doctrines because the Bible is so plain and simple about it that the Bible teaches a child can understand the simplicity. So turn to the Lord Jesus Christ today. He is willing that none shall perish. There is going to be no excuse for anybody who is upon this planet for this amazing gospel will be preached to all the creatures that are living upon the face of the earth. And we believe that the time is at hand when Jesus is about to come back. For the Bible teaches when nation shall rise against nation and kingdom against kingdom and all those pestilence that will take place and there will be earthquakes. The Bible teaches when these things begin to come to pass and lift up your head for your redemption draweth nigh. So pay attention to what is happening, especially in Israel these days. There is so much killing going on which indicates that Jesus is about to come back, that Jesus is about to set his foot upon this planet again. So lift up your head and come to Jesus. Never mind what your religion taught you. Never mind what you've been taught all your life. Give the Bible a chance. It's the only thing, it's the only book that has any truth left in itself. Don't lean on any other books. Don't lean on any priest or preacher. But lean on the Word of God. For this is the only rock that will stand when time of trouble will come. And believe you me, Time of trouble is now here. Means our hearts are failing them for fear of the things that are happening upon the face of this world. And you, sinner friend, turn to Jesus today. He is willing that you do not perish. Forget about what you have been taught. Ask the Lord Jesus into your heart. The, for the Lord Jesus says, He that comes to me, I will in no wise cast out. Do yourself a favor. Your eternal life depends on it. For God loved you so much that He came down and was crucified for you. He took your sin and my sin upon Himself that we may be debt free when we step into eternity. All our debts will be canceled. There is one beautiful thing that has happened. Once a person accepts the Lord Jesus Christ, all his good things that he does will be kept record of, and all his bad things will not be remembered. But when a person does not accept the Lord Jesus Christ, all his bad, bad things will be kept record of, and all his good things will not be remembered. So what will, what will you have when you stand before the throne of God? Will you be totally pure or will you be totally bad? There is only two. There is no in-betweens. 
And Jesus is the only one that can cleanse you, that can make you holy, that can make you worthy of heaven. Turn to Him by faith today. For the Bible teaches, if you come to Jesus, He will take you in and take you unto Himself and make you part of His kingdom. And until next time, the Lord open your eyes to the simplicity of this message. I'm compelled to speak to you on the end times and what is happening all over this planet. I believe the time is at hand when Jesus is about to split the sky. There are some terrible atrocities hap happening all over the world where Christians are being murdered for their faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. And we know in the Middle East, anybody who keeps his eye on the Middle East knows that they have started a war over there that only a nuclear explosion or the Antichrist will be able to stop. For I believe the time is at hand when the, the one who is going to make that false peace with the Israelis will, is going to step on the scene. And I know for a fact that the Bible predicted these terrible atrocities that are now taking place all over the world are coming to be fulfilled. Matthew chapter 24 describes very vividly that nation will rise against nation and kingdom against kingdom and there's going to be terrible pestilences and earthquakes all around the world. And we know that is happening. We don't even have to turn on the news. We can hear people talking about it all around us. Especially since the September 11 deal where the t Twin Towers were brought down by those Muslim extremists. We know that they are preparing yet another attack. And the U.S. government has put into place a shadow government, meaning they have a government hidden away in underground bunkers where people will not be able to find them in case Washington, Washington does get attacked by a nuclear explosion so that this country will still have a government left. And the Bible believes these things are true because the Bible teaches there are going to be perilous times in the last days. And especially amongst those who believe that they are God's people. They're seducing in spirits and doctrines of devils invading the churches and people are becoming so passive that they don't seem to care what's going on. Everybody is accepted into the family of God, whether they are Christians, Muslims or whoever. And we know that witchcraft has become so prevalent and prevailing throughout North America that they are being recognized as a church. This is true. If you go anywhere in the States and look in any phone book, you can find churches of Satan in the phone dictionary. It seems like people don't know the difference anymore between good or bad. And I believe the Bible predicted that when Jesus said in the last days these perilous times shall come. The seducing spirits that are coming upon the face of this earth is just incredible. The children are being taught on TV through the, through the cartoons that demonism is nothing more than a way to have fun. So they are infecting our young kids with these terrible things that are happening in the witchcraft world. And I want the, the Christians to pay attention because if you even so much as half pay attention to what's going on on the news, you know that the time is at hand when Jesus is about to split the skies. So take note for the, the war in Israel in the Middle East is escalating to the point where I believe something terrible will happen. And I believe God, if God doesn't intervene soon, we are going to have a calamity here on earth that is so clearly 
uh, indicated in the book of Revelation if somebody reads about it. So don't bury your head in the sand. Look up, lift up your heads for the time when Jesus is talking about is here. We are not, it's not in the future, it is here, it is about to happen. When he'll have to come back and take us out before the terminal antichrist uh, takes a hold of the government and takes over the world. For those of you who are listening and believe in the Lord Jesus Christ, I believe you are, we are called to bring this message to whoever will listen and bring it to, her, to their attention. And I, believe, I hope and pray that you are already on the move and bringing this, this message of the Lord Jesus Christ to, to the people who are around you. And I hope and pray that the Lord will find us waiting for Him when He comes back. For He is about to split the skies and call the church to Himself. And until next time, the Lord bless you and make you a blessing to whoever you meet. Thank you. Amen.